Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Pastor Jason coming to you from my home office. Today, we are beginning our 15 days of prayer. This is actually day one. We've made a commitment at the Lakeside Church that we're going to take the next two weeks and just pray, seek the heart of God. And we believe that prayer changes things. And so, there's a lot going on right now. I know the next two weeks are critical. I'm not going to pretend like I know a whole lot about the coronavirus and all that stuff, but I do know this, that um, that what happened in Italy, we don't cer certainly don't want to happen here in the United States. And then you see places like South Korea that seem to be able to manage it a little better. And so we want our government to be able to manage this properly, and we want to work with them, and we want to protect the life of uh, the elderly and those with pre-existing conditions. And so uh, we need to be smart. We need to follow the guidelines of our government. And then we need to operate in prayer and operate in faith. So we said day one, this was faith and wisdom. Come on. And not faith without wisdom, but it's faith and wisdom. And I've heard somebody say, how come Walmart's open and the church is closed? Let me tell you something. The church is never closed. Um, anybody that says that, they have a mindset that believes the church is what happens on a Sunday morning for an hour and a half. That is a very small part of what the church is and who the church is. I would say that who the church really is, is not just what we do on Sunday, but what we do Monday through Saturday. And so we're going to be the church and part of being the church is committing to prayer. So for the next 15 days, these are critical. What we do in the next 15 days is critical to keep this virus down and the spread down. So let's be smart. Let's use wisdom. Um, let's follow the basic guidelines that the government has given. Most importantly, let's pray. Let's pray. So this is day one. And day one, I want to go to my go-to text, Philippians chapter four. And I just want to read this with you real quick. Philippians four, verse four says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I wonder if now is a good time to rejoice because I'm glad the Bible put the word always there because I'm not so sure that right now would be a time that I would pick to rejoice. And yet the Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. And then it repeats it again. I'm saying rejoice, right? The Bible says, let your gentleness be known to all men for the Lord is at hand, right? And then the Bible says in verse six, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Let, let that sink into your heart today as we begin these 15 days of prayer. I need to hear this. I'm the preacher. You need to hear this. Every single believer needs to hear this. Every single person um, that perhaps doesn't even know God, you need to hear this. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. How do you do that? Here's how. Because in everything, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, right? Let your requests be made known to God. And then watch what happens. The Bible says, and then the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. That's such a good word. So I said this last Sunday, and I mean this. We're going to stand by this. We don't panic. We pray. That's what we do. We're not going to panic. Why? Because the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then the Bible says the peace of God, which transcends understanding, it's going to guard your heart, the place of your emotions, right? Your will, your personality, and also guard your mind, the way you think. You got to get your mind. Everybody's losing it out there, but we're the believers. We're the children of God. We don't have to lose it. We have a God who cannot fail. We have confidence in God. We have confidence in his word. And so we can be in the midst of all kind of chaos and you, and yet still be at peace because of the presence of almighty God. I really believe that the church has an opportunity to shine in this season, to be the example, to set the example of how we deal with difficult things. Here's verse eight. Finally, brethren, Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble and just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, med meditate on these things. Watch this, good reports. 
So you can't be watching news, 24 hours news cycle, counting the death count. And that's number one, it's not a good report. A good report would be how many people are coming through this coronavirus. And so you want to get a good report. And then the Bible says meditate. And I'll tell you, you want a good report? Get this right here into your heart. This is a good report. So no matter what you hear, get this word right here into your heart. And here's what the Bible says, right? Uh, meditate on these things. Meditate on what is true. Well, how do I know what's true? Well, I'll tell you, this is true. This is true. And this is a good report. And this right here will bring you peace. Then the Bible says, the things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, the apostle Paul says, these do, and the peace of God will be with you. I can tell you this about Paul. Paul was a man of prayer. Paul was a man of faith. Paul was a man that spent time in the presence of God. So he says, anything you've saw in me and you've seen in me, do these things and the peace of God will be with you. So here's what we're gonna do. Come on, somebody. We're gonna pray for the next 15 days. We're gonna pray um, pray for our uh, medical workers, our staff, our personnel, doctors, nurses, EMTs, first responders, our law enforcement. We're gonna have a specific prayer focus every single day, and we're gonna give these to you every single day at noon, at lunchtime. So on your lunch break, you can tune in Get this devotion into your heart and then have something to pray that day. So I just want to lead you in prayer as we close this out. And then we're going to release this thing to you so that you can go to the Lord in prayer. So Father God, I love you. We honor you. We worship you. We praise you. We thank you, God, that you are still God, that you are seated on the throne today, that nothing has happened that has caught you by surprise, God. Nothing, there's no alarm bells in heaven going off, God. You're still on the throne. You, you know what's going on. You see us. You love us, God. Your word is true. And I thank you, God, that when we come to you, we experience the peace of God. So I pray for every single person starting these 15 days of prayer, that they would come to you, they would turn to you, that they would stop turning to the news and stop turning to just being inundated with bad news 24 hours a day. But God, they would open up your word and that your word would be like a seed planted in their heart, God, that it would grow and produce peace. We thank you for your peace, God. We have it today. And so God, uh, we love you. We worship you. We honor you. We praise you, God. Give us a heart to pray. Today, we don't panic. We pray. Because the Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer, supplications, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all under understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. We pray it in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people said, amen. Be praying and look for more content each day at noon. God bless.